Hi, this is the left sister and not an affiliate of the Narrow Who Don't Ministry. The Bible teacher, Minister Dennis Rogers, grace and peace be unto you from God our Father. The Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We do not do this without covetous, 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 and covetous. Let's turn our Bible to Ephesians chapter 5. Let's go to our Bible to Ephesians chapter 5. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians. Amen. Chapter 5. Did he begin to read? Ephesians chapter 5. Verse number one, begin reading. Amen. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as okay. becometh now, he saints. Said, Plea on that case, holding a desire for more, eager for gain, avaricious, should not be named among you. The word is pleon pleon ek pleon ek taste. On the floor. On the floor. On your feet. On your feet. Be one of them days you have. Pleon ek taste. Plea on ek taste. That's the Greek word for covetous. Here at the narrow of those <coughs> ministry or at the lips of the notch, you guys know we do we define our words. Go back to the original text. We do have the original text. And I read again, we define our words so we can know exactly what the word of God is saying. Because the word of God has an exact meaning. These men that's in the pulpit of America have no idea what the word of God means. Go ahead, J.D. Reed. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. Uh -huh. For this ye know, that no whoremonger, uh -huh. nor unclean person, yep. nor covetous man, uh -huh. who is an idolater. A covetous man, a man who want more, a man who's eager for Gain. A man who's eager for gain is a what? Idolater. He is an idolater. If you're eager for gain, you are an idolater. Which the word idolatry is the word pornea. Pornea, which is the word for no. Uh, Fornication. So an idolatrous man, he is a fornicator. He is practicing pornography. We call our pornography. T.D. Jakes is a pornea. T.D. Jakes practiced idolatry. T.D. Jakes is a idolater. Frederick K.C. Price is idolater. The Baptist preacher is idolater because they're eager for gain. They covetous. They want more. You got mega churches, but you don't have mega schools. You got mega churches, but you don't have <clears throat> you don't have <clears throat> mega houses. All the black preachers interested in is which one is going to have the largest congregation mm -hmm. and the biggest church. Go ahead and read, J.D., for this ye know that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Thank you very much. So he's hell bound. Amen. That man is going to hell. Let's go to Colossians chapter 3. Go to Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. Amen. Let's start big reading at verse number 1. Colossians chapter 3 verse number 1 Amen <clears throat> If ye then be risen with Christ Seek those things which are above Where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God And those things that are of, above Are what kind of things? Spiritual, spiritual things They are spiritual things Paul put it another way in Ephesians He said they are what? Spiritual blessings Paul, Yes he did He said they are what? Ephesians. Go to Ephesians Don't have to guess I said in Ephesians Don't sit there trying to guess Paul say they are what? 
Paul said they have what? Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. He said they have what? Spiritual blessings and heavenly he places. He said they in are Christ. spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Where at? In, in Christ. Christ. In Christ. Spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Go ahead, Brunel, and read. Verse number 2. Set, three, set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ and God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Let's go to First John. Let's go to First John. Let's go to First John, chapter three, chapter two. First John, chapter three. Amen. Chapter three. Huh? Chapter three. First John. Chapter three. Come on, Jenny. Start reading verse number one. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew Him not. Uh huh. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, uh -huh. and it doth not appear. Yet it doth not yet appear what we shall be, uh -huh. but we know that when we, he shall appear, we shall like be like him. For we, I'm sorry, can I start again? Please. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope. In him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. All right, Vanille, pick it back up. Colossians chapter 3, verse number 5. Verse number 4. Colossians 3, 4, Vanille. All righty. Right here. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Going, Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and evil covetousness, concupiscence. Concupiscence is lust. What is the word? Epithemia. 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 And covetousness, concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. All right, go ahead. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. And the children of disobedience, what is going on in them? Let's go back over to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 1. Pick it up, Carolyn, and start reading in Ephesians 2. Verse number 1, read. I know it. And you have Ephesians 2 1? Yes, darling, begin reading. And you have he quickened. That's your what? So. He made your soul alive, didn't he? Yes. Uh -huh. Go ahead. Who were dead in trespassing and sins. All right, keep going. Wherein in time past you walk according to the course of this world. All right, all right, then we walked according to the what? Course, course. of this world. Okay, we walked according to the course of this world. Mm -hmm. Let's go over to the book of Titus and see what we was doing. This is Paul. Every book we read is Paul. We walk according to the course of this world. Go ahead, verse uh, chapter two, verse number eleven. Come on, uh, Armor Bell. For the grace of God is bringing salvation. Come on, speak up, son. Why are you reading so low? Let me hear you, son. For the grace of God that bring, you. for the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. Okay. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, godly in this present world. Come on. Looking for that blessed hope, yes, sir. the glorious appearing of the great God, uh -huh. our Savior Jesus Christ, Come on, son. who gave Himself for us, that He might redeem that He that He redeem us from all iniquity, purify unto Himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. Come on. These things speak, exhort, rebuke with all authority. Thank you. Let no you man. You rebuke, you what? Rebuke. If you rebuke, you what? Your neighbor. Uh -huh. you, love you love your neighbor. Go ahead, Carolyn. Go back to Ephesians and begin reading. 
And you have he quickened who were dead in trespassing and sins. Uh -huh. Where in time past you walk according to the course of this world. Come on. According to the prince of the power of the air. That's right. The spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. That's right. Among whom also we all had our conversation in That's times right. past. In the lust of our flesh. That's right. Fulfilling the desires of our flesh. That's right. I'm sorry. Fulfilling the desires of the flesh. Uh -huh. And of the mind. Go and ahead. were by nature the children of wrath. We were by nature children of wrath. Born of sin. Shaped in iniquity. Let's go to Psalms chapter 58 verses. Psalm 58 1 through 3. Psalm 58 1 through 3 Michael. Psalm 58 1 through 3. Psalms 58 1 through 3. Read son. <coughs> Do you indeed speak righteousness, O congregation? Do you judge uprightly, O you sons of men? Yea, in, the, yea, in heart you work wickedness. Go ahead. You weigh the violence of your hands in the earth. Go ahead. The, the wicked are estranged from the womb. Come on. They go astray as soon as they are born. You best believe it. Come on, carry them back to Ephesians and begin to read. Finish reading. But God, who is rich in mercy, yes, sir. for his great love, wherein he loved us. Yes, he did. Even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. Yes, sir. By grace ye are saved. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Keep going. And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places. So we go back to Colossians chapter 3, verse Brunel, and Paul is saying the same thing. Mm -hmm. Verse number 1, he just said it in a different way. Read verse number 1, Brunel. If ye then be risen with Christ. Saying the same thing. It's only one Paul. Mm -hmm. Doctrine don't change. Amen. Paul do not fight against Paul. Paul Amen. wrote the book of Colossians. Paul wrote the book of Philippians. Paul wrote the book. Hello. Amen. Amen. Hello. Hello, Cleo. Thank you. I'm talking. Paul wrote the book of Philippians. Paul wrote the book of Colossians. Paul wrote the book of Titus. Paul wrote the book of Timothy. You cannot use one scripture in the book of Colossians to refute a doctrine in the book of Philippians because there's only one Paul. Amen. If you do that, and if you believe that can be done, Paul got to be a what type of man? What kind of man? Double mind. I wish I had a witness. Paul got to be a double-minded man. And that's what you guys out there do. Y'all try to go find a scripture in the book of Colossians mm -hmm. to fight against the scripture in the book of Ephesians. Or you try to find a scripture in the book of Ephesians <laughs> and try to fight against a scripture in the book of Philippians. When Paul wrote <clears throat> Ephesians, mm -hmm. Philippians, mm -hmm. Colossians, mm -hmm. and Titus, mm -hmm. every book that we read all the scriptures that we read, Paul is the writer of those books. Eh? And a divided house cannot work. Stand. Amen. Thank you very much. Okay. We're going to go into scriptures because I said I was going to do this and we didn't do it. We're going to go into the Old Testament, work our way to the New Testament and show you that the prophets and the apostles were not covered just me. Let's go to Numbers chapter 16. Verse number one, I'll start reading. Numbers chapter 16. Verse number one, I'll start reading. If we stumble over those scriptures, you guys help them out. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Okay. Okay. In the Numbers, Lord. 16. Numbers chapter 16. Chapter 16. Verse number one. It's okay, take your time. Come on, Mike. Now, Korah, the son of. Is is Come on, Mike. Come on, son. Let's go. Let's go. Now, now, Kor, the son of Izzah, the son of Kohab, the son of Levi, and Dathan, 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 and, Abiram. and Abiram, the sons of Eliab. Eliab, Eliab, and On, the sons of Pela, the sons of Reuben, took men, and they rose up before Moses with certain with certain of the children of Israel, 250 prince of the assemble, assembly. assembly, famous in the congregation, men of renown. 
And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against not. Aaron and they said the unto them. Mm -hmm. yes. They not they gathered themselves against who? Moses, Moses and Aaron. And elected and chose Moses. God. God. God called him the what? What did God call Moses? What was his title? Deliverer. Deliverer. Thank you very yeah. much, Arnold Bear. God called Moses the, the deliverer. deliverer. Read, Michael. And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron and said unto them, you take too much upon you, seeing all the congregation are holy, every one of them, and the Lord, and the Lord is among them. Wherefore, was the whole congregation holy? No. no, no, the whole congregation was not holy. Go ahead and read. Go ahead, remind me. And the Lord is among them. Wherefore, then lift you up yourselves above the congregation of the Lord. Keep going. And when Moses heard it, he yeah. fell upon his face. Yes, sir. And he spoke. Unto Cor, yeah, and unto all his company, saying, "What he say, Mike? Even tomorrow, the Lord will show who are His and who is holy, and That's will cause on. Him." Hold on, son. Mm -hmm. Hold on, son. Okay. Let's go over to the book of Timothy. Mike, you stay where you at. Read okay. that scripture again, Mike. You don't go to Timothy. Read that scripture again, Mike. And he spoke unto Cor, and unto all his company, saying. Even tomorrow the Lord will show who are his and who is holy and will cause him to come near unto him. Even him who even him who he has chosen will he cause to come near unto him. Let's go to Second Timothy J D chapter two verse number nineteen. Read. Amen. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, yes, having this seal. Talk to him. The Lord knoweth them that are his. Thank you very much. And let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Come on, J.D. Reed. But in a great house, in a mega house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver. Great, if y'all don't know it, that word great is the word mega. The word great is M-E-G-A. And God's house is a what kind of house? Mega. But in that mega house, in that great house is what, J.D. Reed? But in a great house, there yes, are not sir. only vessels of gold and of silver, That's right. but also of wood and of earth, Come on, sister. and some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, That's right. he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, right. and meet for the master's use, Come on. and prepared unto every good work. That's why I told you guys, you have to be prepared. God has to prepare you. Read, J.D. Flee also youthful lust, on, lust but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Thank you very much. Come on, Carolyn, verse number 23. But Come. foolish and unlearned questions avoid, Come on. knowing that they do gender strifes. Yeah. And the servant of the Lord must not strive. No, he must not. But be gentle unto all men. He don't strive where at. He don't strive where at. He don't strive in the world. Go ahead. Apt to teach, yes, sir. patient. Come on. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. Come on, sister. If God pre pre peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. Come on. And that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil. Come on. Who are taken captive by captive by him at his will. All right, who was reading? Go back over there and start reading, Mike over there. Who was in the book of what? Numbers. Numbers. Now start reading, sir. Read. This do, take you census core and mm -hmm. all his company, and put fire therein, uh -huh. and put incense in them. That's right. Before incense the Lord is, tomorrow. The incense is symbolic of the what? Prayer. 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 Thank you very much. Incense is symbolic of the prayers of the saints. Keep on reading, son. And put fire therein. Yes, sir. And put Where incense. Where got to come from? What do the fire they got? What do they got to get the fire from? Brazen altar. They got to get the fire off the brazen altar. Mm -hmm. Amen, Vernell. Mm -hmm. They got to get the fire off the altar. Because mm -hmm. the fire is what? Holy. holy. Thank you very much. The fire is holy. Read, Mike. And put fire therein. Thank you very much. And put incense in them. Yes, sir. Before the Lord tomorrow. Keep going. And it shall be that the man whom the Lord do choose. Yes, sir. He shall be holy. Come on, son. You take too God much. God got to choose you in order for you what? To be holy. You're not born holy, are you? No. Amen. Come on, read, son. You take too much upon you. They was what? Covetous. They take too much on them. They was covetous. 
Because they do what? Because they do what? Look at your scriptures. They take too They take. take. They take. Pay attention to your Bible. What do they do? They take, they take too much. Covetous people do what? Take. take. That's all. One word, church. Mm -hmm. Covetous men do what? Take. take. They take so. They take. And the thief come to do what? Steal, Steal kill, kill, and, and destroy. destroy. What do he do? Take. take. He take. He don't give, do he? No. no. No, he don't. Go ahead. Son, read. And you take too much upon you, you sons of Levites. Come on. And Moses said unto Korah, yes, Here, I pray you, you sons of Levite. Right. Seemeth it but a small thing unto you. Yes, sir. That the, that the God of Israel have okay. separated you from the congregation of Israel. Yes, he did. He set them apart to carry the furniture, did mm -hmm. Yes, he did. You got to understand the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. If you do not, thank you. If you do not understand your Old Testament, leave the New Testament alone. You're not going to understand nothing that is going on in the New Testament because you do not understand the Old Testament. The Old Testament is nothing but the New Testament what? Conceived. That's all it is. Paul preached Old Testament. Scriptures that we are reading, the scriptures that we refer to, it's the same scriptures that was preached in the New Testament. But you guys out there, you're listening to that jack leg knucklehead preacher in the pulpit, who y'all think is the man of God. He's an idolater. He's in pornography. He's in pornea. He's worshiping the whore. He's in bed with America. Y'all believe, because he got a lot of money, because he got a mega church that God has blessed him with the money and the mega church he has. That is not scripture. Mm -hmm. Gain is not what? God is. Let's go to 1 Timothy. Stay there, Mike. Not you. 1 Timothy chapter 6. Amen. Go ahead, Carolyn. 1 Timothy chapter 6. Verse number 7. Verse number 6. Uh, Amen. Uh, Verse number one. Start reading, Carolyn. Okay. Who's this speaker? Come on, Mama Bell. Here. Okay. Right, come on, Carolyn. If you're there, let's move. Let's go. If you're there, let's start move. Start at six. But God no, no. Start at verse one, one. Number one, darling. Let as many servants as are under the yoke count their own masters worthy of all honor. Keep on reading, my daughter. That the name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed. Come on, sister. And they that have believing masters, let them not despise them. Come on. Because they are brethren. Come on, son. But rather do daughter. them service. Yeah. Because they are faithful. They trustworthy. And they're reliable. Love. You can depend on them, right? Mm -hmm. Because they got doing them as theos. They got the power of God in them. Amen. Talk to me. Come on, Carolyn. Partakers of the benefit. What is the benefit? What is the benefit? Believing. Grace. Grace, Grace. is the benefit. Okay. Go ahead, Carolyn. These things teach and exhort. Come on, Carolyn. If any man teach otherwise. I don't care who he is. Go ahead. And consent not to the wholesome words. That word is Hugiano. Go ahead. Even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. Come on. And to the doctrine which is according to godliness. What's wrong with that dude? He is proud. Yes, sir. Knowing nothing. He don't know nothing. Go mm -hmm. ahead. But doting about questions and strife. In the world, right? Mm -hmm. Of words. Go ahead. Whereof cometh envy. Come on. Strife. Come on. Railings. Come on. Evil, evil surmisings. Read this very slow. Perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds. Okay. And destitute of the truth. They don't have Christ. Give me John 14, Vernell. Chapter 1, verse John 14, 1 through 6. Come on, V. John chapter 1, verses 1 through 6. Stay where you at, Mike. Stay where you at, Carolyn. Read for now. In the beginning was the word. John 14. Oh, 14. St. John chapter 14. Alrighty. Verses 1 through 6. Vernell. Let not your let not your heart. Be troubled. Let be, not your what be troubled. Let now. not your heart, your understanding, your Thank mind. Thank you. Let not your understanding, not your right ventricle, your left ventricle, your eight order and your pulmonary arteries, <laughs> not the muscle in your chest. Amen. Read V. 
Let not your heart be troubled. This you, is not a funeral verse, is it, J.D.? No. What are these, J.D.? This is marriage vows. These are marriage vows. Read, Vernell. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. He told him to have what? Faith. Faith. Thank you, J.D. He told him to have faith in him. Just like they had faith in who? God. God. Read, Vernell. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. Come I, on, brother. I go to prepare a place for you. Yeah, because I'm your what? I'm your husband. So I got to go prepare a place for you. That's what's wrong with the body of Christ. That's what's wrong with our world today. You want to get married and you ain't got no place for your wife to live. Mm. Talk back with me. Amen. I don't marry people who don't have a place for their wife to live. If you want me to marry you, you better have a job. Talk back with me. Amen. Amen. You better have a place for your wife to live. Amen. You, may, you, you better be able to pay your bills and take care of her. Mm. And you got to pay me <laughs> when I'm married. Amen. Because that's the manifestation that I know you can take care of her. Because if you can't pay me for marrying her, to, for marrying you guys together, you can't take care of her. No. Um, because... <laughs> The, the taking care of that woman begins when I when I read those marriage vows, right? That's Amen. right. After I marry you, that means that woman don't have to work, do she? No. No, that man's supposed to take care of that work. She can work if she desires, right? Amen. But the responsibility and accountability is on who? The man. Amen. The responsibility and accountability for Christ to prepare a place for us wasn't on the church, was it? No. The, re the, the responsibility and accountability in John 14 is on Christ. Amen. He didn't tell the woman, I need you to help me. Talk back with me. Amen. I wish I had a witness. Like the Baptist would say, Carolyn, I feel my help come. <laughs> <laughs> come on, be read. In my father's house are many mansions. Yes, sir. If it were not so, I would have told you. Go ahead. I go to prepare a place for you. Come on. And if I go and prepare a place for you, yeah. I will come again and receive you unto myself. Come on. That where I am, there ye may be also. Come on. And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Come on. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest. Right. And how can we know the way? Right. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He said, I am the way, and he is the what? Truth true. and the All life. All right, he is, he's the way, and he's the truth. True. Well, back over there it's to Timothy, Carolyn, and he said, these men are what, Carolyn? The last verse you read, Carolyn, he said, these men are destitute of destitute the what, Carolyn? Destitute of the truth. They're destitute of the truth. Do it say the truth? Yes. What did Jesus say in, Matt, in John 14, 6, Bernal? I am the way, the truth, and he the He said life. the truth. All we interested in, Vernell, the truth. is the truth. We go back to Timothy, Carolyn, mm -hmm. and they tell us that these men are destitute of the truth. Yes. If they destitute of the truth, they destitute of who? Right. Jesus. They don't have Christ. These men do not have Christ. Read, Carolyn. Perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds uh -huh. and destitute of the truth. Right. Supposing that gain is godliness. The word gain. They said they suppose that gain is godliness. If y'all got a pen, you know what? You need to write this in your Bible so you can have this word. That word gain. G-A-I-N. The word gain is the word charismas. You need to write that in your Bible. P. O R I S P M Porismos O S. You need to take your time. I wait for you to write it in your Bible. So, Mike, you can go over there and I wait for you after you write it in your Bible. Go back to your scripture. That word Porismos, Vernell, means money. Get it. They suppose that getting money is what? Godliness. They think getting money is godliness. Because they destitute of the what? Truth. They don't have Christ. So they think by them having a mega church and having mega money, they think that Christ is in their life. It's P O R I S M O S. 
It means money to get it. That's the word gain. G-A-I-N. I want you guys to pause for a moment. I want you to write that word in your Bible. When you go and show people, you can give them the definition of the word gain. That's why we define our words. Because we, we define because a definition puts an end to what? Confusion. We don't have to be confused. We don't have to quarrel and strife about what the scripture means. Amen. All we got to do is define the words. All you got to do is buy you a what? Go buy you a Strong's Concordance. All you got to do is buy you a Strong's Concordance and look up the word. That word game means money getting. That word game means acquisition. It means acquisition. They mean, so they believe that all the things they believe, J.D., mm -hmm. that all that all the things that they acquire, yep. talk about what? Yep. They believe the more things, talk to me, B, Amen. that they acquire in the world, they believe that that's godly. Mm -hmm. Yes. The doctrine of America, acquisitions. <laughs> they believe acquisition <laughs> is godliness. Yep. They believe mm -hmm. acquisition. They believe acquisitions is godliness. They believe that stuff is godliness. They believe that Mercedes Benz is godliness, don't they? Yes. They believe that Cougar is godliness, don't they? Yes. T.D. Jakes believed the money he made from that wicked movie he just made. What's the name of it? Jump the Broom, whatever the name of it. He believed that that is what? God. He, he believed that that is godliness. But you people don't understand. That's why y'all hate us at the Never Hope Dip, Never Hope Dose Ministry. Because we know that T.D. Jakes is a devil, right? Is it? Amen. Because mm -hmm. what do he do? Distribute fortunes. He distribute fortunes to who? Himself. Distribute distribute fortunes to who? Himself. To himself. <laughs> That's where we get our word devil from, right? Amen. That's the word dio, right? Mm -hmm. It means to distribute fortune. You're not going to find the word demon in the Bible. Don't even look for it. All right, Carolyn, please. I want you to read verse number five again. Perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness from such Withdraw thyself. So T.D. Jakes believed that money getting and acquisitions of things in the world is godliness. Or if your pastor, your mama, your dad, your sister, your or brother, mm -hmm. they have a what type of mind? A look corrupt mind. Look at your Bible. What kind of mind they have, Carolyn? Corrupt mind. They have a corrupt mind. They are also in verse number five. T.D. Jakes is what? Carolyn, excuse yes, that's the two of the truth. And verse number four, Carolyn, he is also what? He's envy. Verse number four, Kelly. I'm sorry, he is proud. also what? He's proud. What else? Do we no, know anything? No, he's, what do we know, Carolyn? He knows. Doting about questions. What do he know, Carolyn? Nothing, I'm sorry. Thank you. He don't know nothing. T D Jakes is an ignorant man. Is it? Because he believes money getting acquisition is godliness. Mm -hmm. Does it? Amen. Go ahead, Carolyn, verse number six. But godliness with contentment is great gain. Godliness with self satisfaction is great gain. Go ahead, sister. For we brought nothing into this world. Go ahead, sister. And it is certain we can carry nothing out. Go ahead, sister. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. Mm -hmm. Amen. But they that will be rich fall into temptation. Yes. And a snare. Yes. And into many foolish and hurtful lusts. Thank you very much. Which draw men in destruction and perdition. Read, sister. For the love of money is the root of all evil. Come on. Which while some coveted after. Come on. They have erred from the faith Come on. and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Go to Luke chapter 12 and verse number 15. Palmer Bear, Mike, you get ready to start reading your verse again. Go ahead. Palmer Bear, Luke chapter 12, verse 15. 
And he said unto them, and he said, Hold on, on, wait for me to finish my sentence. Luke chapter 12, verse 15. Read on the bell. And he said unto them, Take heed, beware of covetousness, for for man's life considered not in the abundance of things. Man's life does not consist in what? The abundance of acquisitions. Acquisitions. So you can put the word acquisitions where it says the abundance of things that he possessed. Right there you put acquisitions. Write the word where it says abundance of things which you possess. Write the word acquisition. Okay? Hey CQ, you are aqua S I T I O E. That's what you should have there. Acquisition. That's what Jesus said, right? Amen. But the people hate Jesus, though. Amen. They love their jackleg, knucklehead, dumbbell preacher, don't they? Amen. Because he's telling them they can get a whole lot of what? Acquisition. You best believe he's telling them they can get a whole lot of acquisition. That's what he does. All right, Mike. Back to your scriptures, Numbers chapter 16. Continue to read. Seemeth it but a small thing unto you. That the God of Israel has separated you from the congregation of Israel uh-huh. to bring you near to himself to do the service of the tabernacle of the Lord and to stand before the congregation to minister unto them. Right. And he have brought near, he have brought thee near to him. Yes, he and has. all your brethren, the sons of Levites. Look at that scripture again. You say he has brought what? Thee near to him. He has brought you near to him. Turn your Bible to St. John chapter 6, verse 44, 45. Stay right there, Mike. Come on, y'all. Move with the quickness. When you get there, say amen. amen. <clears throat> Read on John 6, 44, 45. No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him. Thank you very mm. much. You cannot accept Christ as your personal Savior. That is no scripture in there. You can't draw near to Christ unless God do what? Thank you very much. Read, Vernell. And I will raise him up at the last day. Come on. It is written in the prophets, and they shall be taught of God. Yes, sir. Every man, therefore, that hath heard and have learned of the Father cometh unto me. Thank you very much. That's no might. And he hath brought thee near to him. That's right. You can put John 6, 44, 6, 45 by that verse. See, the gospel preached the same thing as in the Old Testament. It does. Mm-hmm. It just says it in a different way, though. Amen. Amen. Go ahead, Mike, read. And he hath brought thee near to him, and all your brothers and the sons of Levi with thee, and seek you the priesthood also. So what are they doing? Covenant. Because they seeking the what? Priesthood. Right. They're covenant somebody else's position. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Talk back with them. Amen. Just like the black man, he want to cover the white man's position. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. No. Amen. 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 Go ahead, Mike. For which cause both you and all your company are gathered together against the Lord. Go ahead. And what is Aaron? So when you covered it, who you who the who have you gathered against? The Lord. The Lord. You covered it, you gather you gather yourself against God. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, Tom. Which you for which cause both you and all your congregation are gathered together against the Lord. Uh-huh. And what is he Aaron? And his whole congregation is against God. Yeah. The mega church and the whole congregation is against him. God. Best believe it. Who said that? Dennis and Moses. 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 <laughs> and what is Aaron that you mumber against him? Uh-huh. And Moses sent to call Dan- Dayton and Abiram, Abiram the uh-huh. sons of Eliab. Mm-hmm. Which said, which said, we will not come up. (laughs) Is it a small thing that you have brought us up out of the land that flows with milk and honey to kill us Mm -hmm. in the wilderness, except you make yourselves Mm -hmm. altogether a prince over us? Moreover, you have not brought us up into the land that flows with milk and honey. Because the appointed time and it said time had not worked. Huh? Mm-hmm. Thank you. Keep reading, Mike. Or give us an inheritance of the fields. They was the... believing and depending on T.D. Jakes and not believing and depending on what? The Lord. Uh-huh. That's why Jesus said, you believe in God, believe also in who? Me. Me. Thank you very much. Keep reading, sir. <laughs> and the vineyards. Will you put out the eyes of these men with, with, 
with we the women, excuse me. We, we will will. not come up. And Moses was very wroth and uh-huh. said unto the Lord, What did he say? Respect not you their offering. So he, I have not taken a ass come on. from them, I mean one ass from them, neither have I hurt one of them. And Moses said unto Kor, But you be thou. And, be, thou. I mean, be thou and all your company before the Lord, thou and they and Aaron to tomorrow. Okay, so he wasn't covered, just was Moses. Let's go, no. to, let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 12, start reading in verse number 1. Unk. 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse number 1, start reading, son. And, and Samuel said unto all Israel. What you say? And, and Samuel said unto all Israel. Go ahead. Behold, I have hearkened unto your voice, and all that ye said unto me. Go ahead. And have made a king over you. Right. And now behold, the king walketh before you. Right. And I am old and gray-headed, and behold, my sons are with you. Right. And I have walked before you from my childhood until this day. Yes, sir. Behold, here I am, witness against me before the Lord right. and before his anointed. Right. Whose ox I, whose ox have I taken? Come on. Or whose ass have I taken? Come on. Or whom have I defrauded? Uh huh. Whom have I oppressed? Come on. Or or of whose hand have I received any bribe to blind my eye therewith? So the bribe, the money they take blind, they understand in their mind, until disciplining them, telling them the truth, putting them faggots, putting them faggots, them homosexuals, them fornicators, them adulterers, them lying deacons, them lying mothers on the motherboard, all of those covetous individuals in the choir, the covetous preacher in the pulpit, they will not put them out of the church because they don't took a what? Right. And they got, what are they doing to the people? Defrauding the people. Mm-hmm. Read it one more time. Um, First Samuel chapter 12. Start reading in verse 1. And Samuel said unto all Israel, Behold, I have hearkened unto your voice and all that ye said unto me and have made a king over you. And now behold, the king walketh before you. And I am old and gray-headed. And behold, my sons are with you. And I have walked before you from my childhood until this day. Behold, here I am, witness against me before the Lord. Right. And before his anointed. Right. Whose ox have I taken? Right. Or whose ass have I taken? Right. Or whom have I defrauded? Right. Whom have I oppressed? Or of whose hand have I received any bride to blind my eyes therewith? Okay. And I will restore it to you. And I will restore it, you. And they said, Thou hast not defrauded us. That's right. Nor oppressed us. That's right. Neither hast thou taken aught of any man's hand. That's right. And he said unto them, The Lord is witness against you, and his anointed is witness this day. That you have to, that's good enough. Let's go to Second Kings chapter five. We did that already, right? Yeah. Let's go to Daniel chapter 5, verse 16. No, let's go to Acts chapter 20, verse number 28. We didn't do Paul. We did Daniel. We want to do Paul. We go to Acts chapter 20. And we want to start reading at 28. J.D. Acts chapter 20, verse number 28. Amen. Go ahead and read. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and right. to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the, ch- the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood for I know this that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you not sparing the flock also of your own selves shall men arise speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years I cease not to warn every one night and day with tears. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. I have coveted no man's silver. One more time. I have coveted no man's silver or gold or apparel. Yea, ye yourselves know that these hands have ministered unto my necessities. And to them that were with me, I have showed you all things how that so laboring ye ought to support the weak 
and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, Lord, how he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Keep going, and when he had thus spoken, he kneeled down and prayed with them all. And they all wept sore and fell on Paul's neck and kissed him, sorrowing most of all for the words which he spake, that they should see his face no more. And they accompanied him unto the ship. Let's go to Exodus chapter 18, verse 21. Exodus 18, 21. Carolyn, read when you get there. Come on, baby. Moreover, thou shalt provide out of all the people able men such as fear God, men of truth, hating covetousness, and place such over them to be rulers of thousands, and rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, and rulers of tens. And let them judge the people at all seasons. You supposed to judge? Amen. Oh, yes. Go ahead, sir. And let them judge the people at all seasons, and it shall be that every great matter they shall bring unto thee, but every small matter they shall judge, so shall it be easier for thyself, and they shall bear the burden with thee. Come on, Carolyn, Exodus 23 and 8. And thou shalt take no gift, for the gift blinded the wise, Come on. and perverted the words of the righteous. Let's go to Deuteronomy 10 and 17. Amen. Read on the For the Lord your God is a God of God, Lord of Lords, a great God, mighty, a terrible, which regardeth not person, nor take a reward. He doth execute the judgment of the fatherless, widow, love of the stranger, and giving him food and raiment. Love ye therefore the stranger, for ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. Verse twenty. Deuteronomy 16, 19, J.D. Deuteronomy 16, 19. Amen. Read. Thou shalt not rest judgment, thou shalt not respect persons, neither take a gift. For a gift doth blind the eyes of the wise, and pervert the words of the righteous. Hmm. That which is altogether just shall thou follow, that thou mayest live and inherit the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Deuteronomy 27, 25. Verneo. Deuteronomy 27, 25. Amen. Cursed be, he, cursed be he that taketh reward to slay an innocent person, and all the people shall say, Amen. Let's go to 1 Kings chapter 15, verse number 10, I believe, or 19. 1 Kings 15, 19. Read, Michael. 1 Kings 15, 19. 1 oh, Kings 15, read, Bernal. There is a league between me and thee, and between my father and thy father. Behold, I have sent unto thee a present of silver and gold. He Come and, him, didn't he? Amen. Go ahead. <laughs> Come and break thy league with Basha, king of Israel, <laughs> that he may depart from thee. Let's go to 2 Kings 11 and 8. 2 Kings 11 and 8. Read, Michael. 2 Kings 11 and 8. Amen. Read on the bear. And you shall compass the king round about. Every man with his weapon in his hand. He that cometh within the ranges, let him be slain. And and be ye with the kings as he goeth out, as he cometh in. And Second the Second Chronicles nineteen verse seven. Second Chronicles nineteen and seven. Amen. Amen. Read JD. Amen. Wherefore now let the fear of the Lord be upon you. Take yeah. heed and do it. Right. For there is no iniquity with the Lord our God, nor respect of persons, nor taking of gifts. Thank you. Go to Job 13, Job 15. Job 15, verse 34. Amen. Read up. For the congregation of hypocrites shall be desolate, and fire shall consume the tabernacles of robbery. Let's they, go. That's it? Yeah. Let's go to Psalms 15 and 5. Carolyn, Psalms 15 and 5. 
You want to kind of slow to that camera? Amen. Too much. Too much. <laughs> he, that put, <clears throat> he that put it not out his money to Start use. Start read verse number one. This is good. Y'all need to highlight this verse. This is the one who's going to inherit the kingdom of God. These are the ones that's going to inherit Holy Mount Zion. This is actually scripture right here. Start at verse number one, Kelly. Read Psalms 15 and 1. Lord. This is what David said. Go ahead. Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Yes, sir. Who shall dwell in the holy hill? Yes, sir. He that walketh uprightly and yep. walketh righteousness, righteousness mm -hmm. and speaketh the truth in his heart. Yeah. He that bite, backbited not with his tongue, yeah. nor doeth evil to his neighbor. Right. Nor taketh up a reproach against his neighbor. Right. In whose eyes a vile person is contempt. Contempt. What? Contempt. Contempt. How do you spell it? C O N C O N T E M N E D. He contempt. That means disre what? Respect. He despised and disrespected. That's what that word means. T D Jakes is a vile person in my understanding. Mm -hmm. Amen. Go ahead and read, uh, Carol. In whose eyes a vile person is contempt? Yeah, because he supposed what? Gain is godliness. Go ahead, Carol. But he honoreth them that fear the Lord. Yeah. He that swear to his own hurt. Yeah. And change it not. That's why they say he's going to get his money out, though it hurt him. He made his, gave his word, he still get it. Mm -hmm. He swear to his own hurt. B, you said, hey, man, when I get my income tax check, preacher, I'm going to give you $1,000. When you get your income tax check, you don't change your mind. Amen. You owe me that stack, dude. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Kelly Reed. He that put it not out his money to, to usury. He don't charge interest on a loan, do we? No. Yeah. Go ahead, Carolyn. Nor take it to reward against the innocent. Uh-oh. Go ahead. He that doeth these things shall never be moved. Go to Psalms chapter 26, verse number 10. Amen. Read thee. And whose hands is mischief, and their right hand is full of Start rods. verse number 1 and read the verse number 10, V. Judge me, O Lord, for I have walked in mine integrity. Right. I have trusted also in the Lord, therefore I shall not slide. Right. Examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Right. Try my reins and my heart. Yes, sir. For thy loving kindness is before mine eyes, yeah. and I have walked in thy truth. I have not sat with vain persons, neither will I go in with dissemblers. I have hated the congregation of evildoers and will not sit with the wicked. I will wash my hands in innocence, so will I compass thine altar, O Lord, that I may publish with the voice of thanksgiving and tell of all thy wondrous works. Lord, I have loved the habitation of thy house and the place where thine honor dwelleth. Gather not my soul with sinners, nor my life with bloody men, in whose hands is mischief, and their right hand is full of bribes. But as for me, I will walk in mine integrity, redeem me, and be merciful unto me. My foot standeth in an, in an even place, in the congregation will I bless the Lord. 